Today's world runs on data, and protecting that data is more challenging than ever before due to three emerging trends. Greater complexity. The number of connected devices will reach 200 billion in 2020, and in the near future, only 1% of devices will be located in an organization's data center. More security threats. Hackers are using more cloud computing power and artificial intelligence to make attacks more effective. As a result, global damages from ransomware are expected to reach 20 billion by 2021. Increased costs. The hardware and staff needed to manage and protect all of their data is a budgetary challenge for companies. Traditional approaches are no longer enough. They can't keep up with today's ever-changing threats. And they create a lack of integration across an organization's cybersecurity posture. Organizations must be cyberfit, making them ready to take on the challenges of today and the future. Modern data needs a modern approach. One that combines data protection with cybersecurity for something even better, cyber protection. There's a revolution happening. Organizations must address the five vectors of cyber protection. Known by the acronym SAPAS, those five vectors are safety, which ensures a reliable copy of data is always available for recovery. Accessibility, which makes data easily available from anywhere at any time. Privacy, by controlling who has visibility and access to data. Authenticity, so there's undeniable proof a copy is an exact replica of the original data, guaranteeing it is unaltered. And security, that protects data, applications and systems from the latest cyber threats and zero-day attacks. Those who fail to embrace this new approach will have people, processes, and technologies that are not cyber fit, which puts their organizations and careers at risk. Those who are cyber fit will be ready to protect their data, gain more value from it, and find more opportunity and success. You're now at the forefront of this transformation. Welcome to the Cyber Protection Revolution. Welcome to the Acronis Global Cyber Summit 2019. Please welcome to the stage your host for today, Acronis Chief Growth Officer, Dan Havens. Good morning. Thank you for coming out this morning. Thank you for coming to the Acronis Global Cyber Summit. I uh, want to start out by just giving a hats off or a thanks to Giacom who did the uh, reception last night. When I come into an event like this, I always like the next morning, I always try to keep my eyes on the people who went deep into the reception and maybe even snuck out to South Beach and went to Mangoes or something. And you can always pick them out because they have a coffee in one hand and a Red Bull in the other. And so as he lays his Red Bull down there, so you, you, you kind of know who you are. But we'll, we'll do that again tonight. Got a big day lined up today. Uh, we talked a little bit last night about the opportunity that lies ahead. This is front of mind, front of line for every one of our customers. And I think together we can really make an impact on this. Hopefully you're gonna walk away with a number of insights to be able to write that business plan for going forward. Just a couple of reminders, going mobile. If you haven't done this already, get this downloaded on your phone. Even I can do it. I went to public school and I was still able to do it in 45 seconds. So get that downloaded onto your phone. And then finally, let's get social. I mentioned to some of you, some that weren't in the room last night, the prizes that go to these insertions here, anybody that can take a cool picture, get that submitted. We've got a number of them streaming in now. Ton of gifts going out. We'll have some at lunch today, and we'll have some more at the reception tonight. But these are truly, truly collector's items. So take advantage of that. It's, uh, it's an easy win, in my opinion. So without further ado, I want to get this bad boy started and see if we can get... Uh, get our founder and our CEO up here to get us kicked off. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, please help me introduce or help me welcome Sergey Belisov. Hello, everybody. How many of you have been to uh, reception yesterday? 
Okay, okay. Well, that's a large number. Almost everybody. How many of you have not been to reception yesterday? Okay. Anyways, we'll repeat everything which you didn't hear. Almost. So let's start. So first of all, I want to start with a little history. Uh, this whole idea of having events for partners and working with partners deeply came from the time when uh, me and, and the team which works with me started the software business, which was in Singapore in 1996. This was my first event. This was my first time when I spoke in English to a large audience in 1996, and it was in this Pan Pacific Hotel in uh, Singapore uh, for a Solomon Software, the company which we eventually sold to Microsoft. Um, then, uh, 2001, we had the first event for Parallels. At that time, Acronis was still part of SWSoft, and it was um, actually an opening event. Um, there are stories to tell about this event and the way we dealt with competitors. I don't have time for it here, but uh, we also still had about 200 people who were still in Singapore. Then we had first summit, uh, which was in Hyatt Regency. And one thing for you to understand the challenge of this particular event is that this event is the first large multi-day event Acronis runs in its history. Acronis is a 16 years old um, uh, as a separate uh, entity, and it's 19 years old as a, a brand and as a product, and, and we are doing this event for the first time. Actually, in Parallel Summit, we had 160 attendees, and it was across the street from the office in, in uh, Herndon, Virginia, next to Dallas Airport, and, and we have many more people today here. As you can see, we planned for a little bit less, and, and so if we have any hiccups, that's just because we're new. Then we had large event here, which was in 2010 in Fountain Blue, Miami. There was about 1,000 attendees actually together with Acronis, uh, to, with Parallels people. And, and that's how we ended up here. It's also how I ended up having Acronis tattoo, as I've realized watching the movie, which I've shown last night uh, on my right shoulder. Uh, it stayed in my subconscious, and subconscious actually makes you do very strange things. So when we changed the brand in Acronis, I, I actually did put uh, Acronis brand on my shoulder. Then we had the largest event which we had in this team, and this was uh, in Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, uh, 1.6 thousand people. Uh, uh, you know, Las Vegas is a, a very uh, a, a unusual place, or rather a very usual place for the events, and one of the problems in the Las Vegas is destruction which surrounds you. There was a lot of destruction. Here we have a movie convention. I'm not going to tell you at this uh, setting what was a convention which was happening one floor below. Uh, parallel Summit, but it was significantly more interesting for our hosting service provider partners. <laughs> uh, some of them came to our event. And then finally, we had the first event, which was large for Acronis. Still, it was a single day, half day event, which was last year. And so now we're here. Welcome to Acronis uh, uh, Global Cyber Summit. We have about 1,000 people registered. We have over 500 in this room. There, there is more would not fit. We have 57 countries. Of course, most of you are from this country, but uh, there, is a, there are people from all countries. And even Typhoon, which happened in Japan, did not stop our Japanese team from coming. Japanese team, where is the Japanese here? Who, who is from Japan here? Oh, see, yeah, there are people from Japan. Thank you. <laughs> also, special thanks to our sponsors. Uh, this is the first time we're doing the event, so they took a risk with us because they have no clue at this point whether we will deliver or not, but we do have uh, distributors, service providers, ISVs, OEMs, analysts, education, and many other friends who are helping us with many parts of this event. The way we run Acronis is the same way we run this event, and so it's not just about business. So Acronis, as you know, we are um, a global company. We were um, uh, founded effectively in Singapore in 2003. And we have reincorporated ourselves in Switzerland in 2008. So now we have two headquarters. It's an important part of our strategy. We have two headquarters and two wealthy, stable, independent, neutral, and friendly countries, Switzerland and Singapore. Uh, we have rebuilt the company. We, and uh, that is my team, is running the company only for six and a half years. And in this six and a half years, we went through tremendous transformation, which was probably the most difficult, well, not probably, for sure, it was most difficult uh, part of my entrepreneurial career. 
Uh, and, and so we went through the very difficult times. The worst uh, uh, time was probably in 2013, but it was also difficult in 2015 uh, because we actually um, uh, were still rebuilding our products. It took us much longer to rebuild our products. However, we recovered. We grew 20% last year. We are growing over 30% this year. We grew well over 35% in the previous quarter. And we are growing our new business to 100%. And we actually are accelerating. We believe we will grow at least 40% next year. And what does it mean for you? It just means more business, more growth. All of us here want growth, profit, and less churn. And that's what it means with Acronis products. Uh, why Acronis is so unique is that on one hand, Acronis is a relatively small company. We only have 1.4 thousand people. We only have uh, locations in only 32 places, which is, of course, very small for 1.4 thousand people requires us to travel a lot in 20 countries. We support 40 languages. We do business in 150 countries. However, most important thing for Acronis, it is used by almost every large business in the world, which makes it easy to sell because you come to a large business and all you need to do is need to find the pocket where Acronis was used and you need to expand this pocket broader to a broader use in a company. And we are also used by a lot of businesses in general, 500,000 business customers and 5 million prosumers. Uh, we just recently announced one important event in our transformation. For the first time since 2000, uh, well, 2013, we did some kind of capital transaction uh, where we raised $147 million at a well over a billion dollar valuation, which makes us into this Acronis Cyber Dragon Unicorn. Um, and uh, why is it important for you? Because now we have money to spend. We have money to spend to help you to grow faster and with more profit. So let's talk about the trends. I mean, frankly speaking, when I've seen the video, which was shown, uh, actually, since it's the first time it, I've seen it first time, I'm just thinking that I don't need to speak because everything I wanted to say is in the video. But let me give you a bit of a longer version. The world is becoming digital. So autonomous car driving is a part of what, of what we do in Acronis. This is the cars without drivers. The car on top drives with a driver and without a driver. This is the first serious season. We have a first race coming up for Acronis team, uh, which is, again, primarily or as a only software. The cars are physically identical, and they drive without drivers one race and with drivers another race. But besides that, there's all these other trends which are making our physical world much more digital. Digital is becoming extension of our physical world. It's becoming impossible to live without digital, and it's becoming part of every personal and business process in every aspect of life. And as any universal thing, like mobile phone, it's becoming uh, such um, in every country, non-dependent on the country wealth, non-dependent on the country uh, position, Digital is important. And there is one thing about digital which is um, very, very special. And it's very, very different from a physical world. Unless it's protected, it's very, very easy to destroy. Wiping up one petabyte of valuable data, potentially in the future you can't live with it, uh, requires no energy. You just press a button and you wipe it. And it happens. In fact, we had many situations with our partners when they wipe data accidentally. And demolishing a physical object and, and this particular building uh, will require less than one petabyte of data to record everything about the building, about the people who construct it, about the construction process, about all of the materials to construct it, about the factories which will make the materials, about the equipment which is needed. All of this together is well less than one petabyte of data. So all of the sort of description of how to make this building is uh, less than one petabyte, but it, it's uh, many trillions of time easier to demolish digital copy of the building versus the building. Plus, in addition to that, another annoying feature of the digital world, and this is inherent annoying feature, this is why we like digital world, is digital world is extremely easy to replicate. So you can have a copy, many, 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 many copies of digital objects, and you will not be able to find out which object is original and, and which object is, is a copy. And, and so there is a big concern about privacy, and there is significant concern about security, and of course, <clears throat> there is a concern about authenticity. Now, so you need to protect digital world. However, it's becoming harder. It's becoming harder for the reason of these three very simple challenges. In five years, 
maybe in three years, we have 100 to 200 billion intelligent stateful devices in the world. Today we have five to 10 billion, so number of devices is going to grow 10 to 40 times. 10 to 40 times, and, and that is very difficult to manage. You have these devices no longer inside the core data center in a Google Cloud or in your large enterprise cloud in some contained space, but all over in the buildings, in Starbucks locations, in gas stations, in hospitals, in schools, in the airports, in smart cities. And, and you can roughly think about all devices as a core edge and endpoint, and the problem with complexity is especially difficult on the edge and endpoint. That's where you deal with very large number of not a small number of devices clustered in a single place in case of the edge, or extremely large number of endpoints. Then security. Security is another thing. Um, together with us becoming IT aware, we are seeing that our um, uh, potential uh, villains are becoming IT aware. So building, um, uh, you know, security, uh, uh, security threats, building viruses, building malware, building ransomware, it's becoming a business. You can actually sign up and get a ransomware as a service. You can find SDKs to build ransomware. And, and so it, this is really a highly developed underworld, highly developed gray market where you can build cyber sets. It's industrialized, it's automated, it's very inexpensive, and it's almost always zero day. In fact, traditional security approach uh, doesn't really work anymore because you are, don't really care about catching the viruses which were there one year ago or even one week ago. Yeah, okay, these viruses are no longer uh, a threat for you, but actually that's not the problem. The problem is a new sense which you don't know. And this is just some examples of some attacks. Um, you know, how many of you have experienced cyber attacks amongst your customers and partners? Well, you see, you see, I mean, that's, um, I, I tell you what, I always judge the danger of something for my business or for myself based on the fact if it ever happened to my businesses or if it ever happened to people I know to their businesses. And when I would ask this question 10 years ago, five years ago, there will be many less um, uh, hands. I remember one of the, um, uh, one of the uh, luminaries of security industry, I'm not gonna name him, uh, who was uh, one of the key engineers and, and CTO for a large security company, one of the largest in the world, once told me he doesn't use security software because it's not necessary, because actually you don't go to a dangerous place and that's all. Uh, now, every place is dangerous. Every time you connect to Wi-Fi, it's dangerous. Everywhere you connect to Wi-Fi, everything you insert in your device, every message which arrives to you is dangerous. And so, yeah, you, you have this as a problem. And then, of course, the cost is a problem because number of devices are growing 10 to 40 times. So if you pay per device, well, you might end up paying 10 to 40 times more. And uh, amount of data is growing four times based on this estimate by IDC. In my opinion, it is growing faster. So if you pay per gigabyte, it's also a challenge. And so to protect the world, you have these three challenges. And we believe that there is a very simple solution, which is what we call cyber protection, uh, which is unique and revolutionary solution because we build it painfully from scratch without losing features, without losing capabilities of security. Our security is world class, it's, it's best. Without losing any features and capabilities of our data protection yet in a single solution, combining these five vectors, safety, Accessibility, privacy, authenticity, and security. Combine it at a single agent, combining it at a single UI, combining it at a single product in such a way that you can actually do it uh, without complexity, with a full security, and at a reasonable cost. And we believe cyber protection is amazing opportunity for all of you. Most of us, make money on something which is a platform business. If you look at cybersecurity plus data protection, plus software-defined storage, plus privacy manager, plus authenticity management, together with services, this is a $250 billion market, which is growing double digits. And this market is extremely fragmented. So everybody needs elements of that. The only complete solution, especially for edge and endpoint, is coming from Acronis. It's a huge opportunity. 
So when I talk to my salespeople about growing 40% next year, they are getting concerned. This is too fast. You know, we just were growing 20% year before. Now we're growing 30. Aren't you happy? In my opinion, we should grow 100%. And that's what is happening with our business because it's a basic need of every person and every organization and every workload in the world. And there are five benefits of doing it in the way we do, which, are, which is integrated. And these benefits are very simple. It's very easy. You don't need to worry multiple vendors, multiple solutions. It's very efficient, especially cost efficient. And you can't afford it to be inefficient because you have so many devices, so much data. It's designed to be secure. Security is built in the product from the start. It's not a post effect. You don't need a separate solution for it. It is secure. Every our product is secure. It's designed to be reliable. You know, in some ways, our products and any protection products, they don't work at all time. Most of the time, they are off, right? In fact, what, that's what we want for our customers. We want the products to be always off. We actually don't want our customers to need to be able to go to our product because the best protection is when nothing happens, right? But, but in, in, in reality, that brings a reliability requirement to a very high standard because the product is almost never used. And then at some point, five years from now, 10 years from now, three years from now, it needs to really work when something happens. And finally, very important part of any kind of protection is not to release control. One of the problems of any protection is if you are protected, you lose your privacy to the protector, at least, or maybe to other people, and, and then uh, you are, need to protect yourself against the protector. And that's why we built our products again painfully in the architecture, which allows us to pr pr protect, cyber protect, all data applications and systems with giving the full control to our partners and customers, how to deploy it, and so on. And so again, the, the very important thing about our solution, we have started doing this four years ago. We shipped our first cyber protection product, ransomware protection in the form of active protection in true image about uh, two, two years ago. But um, you know, now we see some companies like um, some of our competitors buying security companies, so security companies buying uh, data protection companies and merging. Very important difference of our solution, and that's what revolutionary, it is fully integrated on these five levels. It's a single package. It's a single user interface for all of these aspects of protection. It is a single management and single policy for all of these levels of protection. It's a single product which allows the product to work with each other and to be protected in a variety of different ways. One product produces safety, another product produces uh, security, another product produces privacy, combined, there are some unique capabilities, and finally, there are technology integration on a deep technology level, which enables us to do things which are literally impossible. You know, it sounds maybe very aggressive, but we have the best ransomware protection in the world right now. We have the best ransomware protection in the world. Most of those attacks, which happened recently with ransomware, if they were to use Acronis product, they wouldn't happen, exactly all of these attacks. And that's because we have these five levels of integration. And in order to achieve this integration, we aggressively innovate. We file a lot of patterns, and we aggressively do new things. It's very difficult to do new things. It's very expensive to do research, because much of the research does not result in technology. Uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, they, the number of patents and number of research which ends up in the product is not so huge. However, we're actively doing it because deep innovation is the only way to deliver things easy, secure, and efficient. We innovate in our core technology, any data, which is something we're shipping for almost 20 years. We innovate in our acronym cyber infrastructure, which is specially designed, software-defined infrastructure for protection. And, and I will talk about this. We innovate painfully with our hybrid cloud architecture, which is our promise to our partners and customers to give them full control how they buy, how they deploy, where they send the data, and how they manage their product, how they encrypt their data. Full control is given to customers. Full control is the most expensive thing in the world. Most expensive thing is to give control. Control is very expensive. And we innovate with blockchain, and we also innovate, of course, with artificial intelligence. All of our products, not just security products, are based on AI for behavioral analysis, predicting failures, and trying to prevent the need 
for protection whenever possible. So there's this uh, several things, and many of you have seen me talk about uh, uh, this several important unique capabilities of Acronis Cyber Protection. First is Acronis Authenticity. Every product of Acronis allows you to certify time step, sign, verify the signing, and identify the person who signed for every piece of data which is in Acronis. We have done it a bit early. That's one of the issues with any innovation. Sometimes you could be a little bit early. We've done it several, I think we started doing it five years ago and we shipped it about three years ago. So we're shipping it for a really long time. But we see that the usage of it is growing up. What is this about? It's very simple. You have a digital object, which is a file, which is a log, which is an archive. And this digital object can be modified. And the only independent way to ensure that it's not modified and that you know it was modified is to make a digital signature and store it in blockchain. And there is management around it. Then, of course, Acronis cybersecurity. Very important part. This is not a NIST model here. This is the model which I like uh, about security. It's about prevention, detection, response, recovery, and forensic. If you look at majority of security tools, they focused on detection and response. So they basically talk about the fact that if something's going on with your computer, we can catch it, and, and then we can stop it. And the reality is that it's not enough. So first of all, many of the things which would be happening with your computer, you don't want them to be happening. You don't want to stop the villain inside your home. It might be entertaining, but not really very safe to have a villain in your home. It's much better to never add, let him in. So you need to do prevention. And we are, have unique prevention techniques, such as smart protection plans, where you can do a backup, we can do a copy of your infrastructure at any suspicion of a possible threat. And a possible threat is not necessarily security. It could be a tsunami, could be a typhoon like in Japan, could be a hurricane uh, like it happens here, or it could be an earthquake or something like that. Not only we can do it um, continuously on your running infrastructure, we also have a copy of your infrastructure, so at relatively low overhead, we can do it on the copy. The problem with all these prevention techniques is like general checkup. Actually, all of us in this room will live longer if we spend one day per half a year to do full general checkup. But how many of you do one day of general checkup every year? Not very many, but if you see the difference, uh, for example, for US presidents, uh, they live very long lives, if you notice. And one difference between them and us is that they're sort of forced to do general checkup very regularly, and, and that's a difference. So if they have any problem, it's found in advance. But it's very expensive, and it's very time consuming, and we can do it without expense and time consumption. Now, another thing which is unique about our security product is recovery. We can no longer rely on detection and response. There will be smart guys who will break in through detection and response no matter what we do. That's just the way the world works today. Software has defects. Any software has defects, and so there would always be people who will be able to exploit them. Plus, in addition to that, if software doesn't have defects, people will continue to be people. They have defects, so any company have employees, and so even without vulnerability from the software, they'll get vulnerability from their employees. So when the threat happens, you actually need to do recovery. And we are unique in the way that we keep a copy, safe copy, secure copy of your infrastructure, and we can call it for recovery. Another thing which is unique, nowadays you have to do forensic, because the villains, they are no longer getting into the computer and immediately breaking it. They're getting in, they're setting the traps, they're sitting there, then something happens, then you recover, and they're still there. And so unless you know what happened, you won't be able to be safe. And so with our product, we can keep much more about your um, infrastructure run, running than a normal uh, security solution. And so we can do proper forensic. These are unique capabilities only available with us. And with that, I want to invite our chief development officer, Nick Gribenikov, with a, uh, with a uh, new nickname, Cyber Nick. <laughs> Cyber Nick will talk about it. Come in. And so he will talk about um, uh, our new product, Acronis uh, Cyber Protect, proactive pre protection before something happened, the best way of protection, active protection during something happening, and reactive protection, making sure that if something did happen and it wasn't stopped, you can safely recover with minimal loss of money, data, or time.
Nick, please go ahead. Thank you, Sergey. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, with my, my about 15 years of uh, experience in cybersecurity, it's uh, really uh, great to present a cyber protect product today. So uh, first of all, I'd like to mention that traditional solutions, which are traditional security, traditional backup in isolation, they do not work anymore. So they can protect customers, they can protect organizations and governments against cyber attacks. I think you read the newspapers, so you know about the news. So even like last week, there are additional attacks which are successful against uh, very protected organizations. And uh, backup, only backup, also can be a solution. Because it's very time consuming, it's very inefficient to do manual recovery from backups. And if we combine antivirus and backups together, just uh, back to back, it will not help also because it's really uh, hard to take all the data without any integration between these solutions. And if you talk about some additional tools, uh, tools also are not very efficient because there are gaps which cannot be closed without integration of solution on technical level, on management level. And when we talk about management tools, it's actually very hard to manage uh, different solutions. Say you have one console for anti-malware, another console for backup, another console for vulnerability assessment, and then another one to manage your customers. So imagine how difficult the life of your technicians will be if you have so many tools. It will be much better if you have just one console which manage all these policies and all these uh, protection parts together. And this is what Acronis Cyber Protect is about. So this is one continuous integrated protection with data classification in it and ability to be protected against uh, natural disasters and other types of threats uh, based on smart protection plans and remediation actions integrated into the product. And it's also recovery. Recovery should be safe. If you just have one competitive uh, backup solution, when you try to recover but your backup copy is infected, you will not be safe, right? You will just spend your time and money recovering uh, the images which are already infected and you will fight against this infection again. So integration of security into the recovery process is critical capability of modern solutions. And forensic investigations already uh, was mentioned by Sergey. So forensic uh, experts, they struggling a lot because they have just one slice of data. When they come to you and you give them a hard drive, they have just one slice and they can't uh, make you a good advice what happened because they don't see the full story. They don't hear the timeline. And if they have several uh, slices with uh, information about what's happened with your system, say for a week, it's much easier for them to make a conclusion and help you to protect yourself for the future. And so let me show you several uh, small videos from our modern product, which is available on the booth today, which will be available on 1st of November in a beta program, open beta. And let's start. So first of all, I mentioned already that this is one single pane of glass. And this is several dashboards you can see in the product. So it's information about uh, security, it's information about backup, it's information about vulnerable applications, the history of security alerts and data protection alerts in one place, uh, patch management uh, installation history, information about what devices are protected, what devices are discovered, this uh, hard drive uh, failure widget, and many others. And very important is to have just one single protection policy where customers and administrators can define uh, all set of protections uh, in one place. So backup, anti-malware, uh, URL filtering as well, vulnerability assessment, patch management. And uh, you are selling backup right now, right, if you are Cronus Partners. And all backup is there. So don't be afraid that we somehow put away backup. It's all here. All these great solutions which Acronis has been developing for 16 years, they are inside the product, but just integrated right now. And uh, let's go next. In this uh, backup settings, we have additional settings called continuous data protection. And this is unique capability, and only a combination of backup and security can bring such capability to you. So when you enable it, you can go and specify some applications which used by your employees uh, to create, to add some value into your organization. So 
You can define applications. You can define uh, find, uh, folders where these files, which they created by these um, applications, will be stored. So, and our product will catch all changes which, we, uh, which are done by these applications in these folders during the day. And if something bad happened, you can recover from backup, from latest um, backup, and add these additional, uh, inf additional uh, files, additional value which your employees created using this application to this latest uh, snapshot. So you don't need to fight against uh, threats in real time because if there is a targeted attack with some people behind this attack, probably your administrators uh, will not be able to successfully protect you against it. But with our product, it's not needed. And there is zero data loss because of this feature. And this combination of backup and security interceptors together in one product. So next, let's look at, uh, let's look at after discovery. Because when you have some devices in, in your network and you don't know about them, it's actually an also a potential gap in security. And our new product allows you to discover devices by different means. So you can manually add some uh, devices yourself, or you can scan your Active Directory structure, and uh, our product will find all devices in this Active Directory, or you can use a network scan like in Windows. And after that, you can enable and add uh, protection policy immediately to such devices, like in this specific uh, screen, you can see this device which we just discovered. And when you discover devices and you create unified protection policy, uh, what you need to do, you first need to think about your applications and uh, vulnerabilities. And our product allows you to scan all your systems to find vulnerable applications and allow you to install patches into these applications. And there is some uh, process when administrator need to enable and agree to set up it. And uh, let's look at our additional feature, remote connection. You don't need anything, just our product to remotely connect to the machines of your customers. And you see Mozilla Firefox version 43, and immediately after installation, this Mozilla Firefox will be updated to the latest version 69. There are many settings in patch management part of our product, and it's backed up by Acronis Security Operation Centers in three locations, in Singapore, in US, and in Switzerland. And our analysts work 24 by seven, and they create vulnerability assessment and patch management records to uh, minimize work of your administrators to protect your systems. So you don't need anything except our product to make your systems and application patched and invulnerable. But another issue can be not, without, not because of some uh, attacks or uh, because of some vulnerabilities. It's just because your hard drives and your computers, they can, uh, over time, be less and less uh, safe. And uh, we have a machine learning model in our product. We collected billions of records from different systems, and we can predict uh, which hard drive in your systems uh, will potentially fail. And, uh, in this situation, we allow you to create a protection plan and protect your uh, systems against such uh, potential issues and uh, recommend to replace in a specific amount of days or months. But it's not uh, only thing uh, our product can protect you against. And uh, as Sergey mentioned, we have this, we have this uh, <coughs> smart protection plans. And uh, imagine there is a hurricane and uh, our security operation center will issue an alert and um, you will be able to make some remediation actions. And in this case, this rem remediation is uh, to enable your servers in Acronis data centers through our Acronis disaster recovery capability. So you create a recovery server, it's very advanced, it's very advanced network settings, so it's not just one machine, it can be a whole subset of machines which will be uh, enabled in Acronis data centers in, if uh, a uh, hurricane is coming to your location. And after that, when it's over, there is a uh, fail, uh, fail back process to take this data from, uh, from Acronis data centers to your, back to your location. And uh, always manage uh, from one product based on Acronis uh, smart protection alerts. And the last part of uh, my speech here is backup is unique source of intelligence. And uh, by scanning backups, we uh, allow administrators uh, to decrease uh, uh, performance impact on your systems. So why to scan endpoints, like thousands of endpoints uh, in real time, when we have a backup copy 
We can take this backup copy, scan for viruses at night, and you don't need to scan your endpoints. And we allow to do it. And you see, we can find some infections within backups and uh, solve these problems without touching your, your customers, without touching your employees. And moreover, we can even create a whitelist from backups. And you know, in uh, security, it's very important to have a great whitelist because when you are very smart and very sharp in detection, you need some whitelist to prevent false positives. And um, we, are, we use this unique source of intelligence to create this whitelist and create more sharp, more advanced heuristics to protect you against uh, cyber threats. That's all for me today. Thank you. Thank you. You know, one, one, one thing about Nick uh, is that if you let him speak, he will speak unlimited amount of time. So we trained this, and he was supposed to speak for five minutes, but uh, as I've seen on this, it took at least 12. And that's why we had to record the videos. If you would allow him to show the product, it may take one hour. So next product, which is next part of our capabilities, which is very, very vital, is a privacy and control. And in all of our products, to some extent today, to a larger extent with some products, to a small extent with other products, we have these uh, five pillars for privacy and control. The first pillar is just control management access. It's just where you deploy the product and where you send the data and ability to change it. The second thing is to control access to storage, which is also very, very important where you send the data and how you encrypt it, who has control of it, whether you give it to partners, whether you give it to us, whether you give it to us for a little while and then take it back. Then control access rights, which is extremely important. You want to know, and, and today it may look you know, like, you know, do you really have data? I remember I was sitting on the panel with some very prominent semi-technology entrepreneur about five years ago, and he told me I have nothing to hide. I think reality is that now you are actually required to control access right because there are laws like GDPR for it, but besides that everybody has something to hide. If you have nothing to hide, you have no control of what you do. Now this next thing which is very important is that one thing is to set access right. Another thing is to actually monitor what happened. What you want, you want to have a proactive monitoring of who has access to your data application on system and for that, we use the same technique, which comes to us from cybersecurity to data protection and here to privacy management, is behavioral access control, where we monitor the behavior of users and applications on your uh, workload, and, and we signal you when something strange is starting to happen. You know, for a human, it's always easy to see. If you have an employee, and most of the time he accesses a certain folder and then suddenly he starts accessing every folder and downloading every file, that's something wrong. And so finally, very important thing is log and audit access for all of the data access with ability to sign these logs and store the, um, uh, the signature in blockchain to make sure that the logs were not modified because that's the only way for you to do forensic. And believe me or not, without forensic in the future, you won't be able to be secure, safe, or private. You will need to have to be able to investigate what happened and for that you need to have accurate logs. And the first thing the bad guy will do is to modify your logs to hide himself. On top of it, we think data management is very important. We're all about data. Our applications and systems are some form of data. And, and with data, you have to offer some data management today. We're offering in our product is business continuity. We're adding global search, which is unique, especially for the edge and endpoint. You can't really run a search today against your edge and endpoint devices. You have to run it by device, which is basically impossible with large number of devices. We have all of the devices in one place. We can run the search on them. You can keep it with us encrypted. You can keep it somewhere else unencrypted where you trust and you can run the search. Also automated protection, which you've seen just now, it's part of the fact that we figure out which applications, which systems appearing on the network and whether there is a better way to protect them. Real-time analytics, another thing which is very important, dashboards without real-time analytics, you don't know what's happening. And finally, policies and compliance, another thing which you can do with your data ensures that you're actually compliant. Today you have regulations, most of those regulations are followed in a very reactive manner 
just once a year you check what happened. The reality is that when something will happen which will be bad, you will need to prove that you were compliant. And unless you constantly check it, you cannot be sure that you're compliant. You can only do it with, a spe with the help of special tools like acronyms. Finally, there is one product which is very important part of our offer, one capability, acronyms cyber infrastructure. Again, this is our own software-defined infrastructure. And one question which I'm always asked for the past six years around this company, why are you so stupid? Why are you actually doing what Amazon, Google, Microsoft, VMware, Nutanix, Red Hat, and so on are doing? These are big companies. How can you do better? And the reason we can do better, besides the fact that we have unique expertise, and many of the people who work for my organization actually invented many aspects in software-defined network infrastructure uh, in general, and, and specifically storage and compute, uh, is the fact that we design it to be extremely easy because it's only for secondary workloads. It's only for you to run them at, from time to time when you have a failure. Very cost efficient, which is extremely important because again, it's not your primary infrastructure. You run your primary infrastructure somewhere, something happened, you want, you want to run it on the secondary, you don't want to spend extra money on it. Extremely secure. Basically, we assume with our cyber infrastructure that you are connected to unsecure network. At the edge, this is how it is. On the endpoint, very often, this is how it is. And so we, it, there is no point for us to provide any kind of protection infrastructure unless it's protected itself. Can it be 100% protected? If it's physically connected, maybe not, but it can be much more protected than what you have otherwise. Very reliable, especially on the edge. You don't have IT expertise. You want to put the box there, forget about it, and five years from now, when there is a failure, it must work. And it's also universal. We provide our own hardware. Already today, we ship appliance in some parts of the world. We'll ship appliance separately uh, everywhere, but also you can use it as software. You can deploy it with us. You can deploy it with yourself. You can deploy it with your customer. You can deploy it with your partner. And with that, I want to invite Alex Miro, who will talk about acronym cyber infrastructure. There are three primarily scenarios of usage of the cyber infrastructure, cyber storage and compute destination, cyber protection backend, and scalable cyber appliance, which you can sell to your customers or your partners, and they can install to do protection themselves. Alex, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, Sergey covered most of the points. I'll go into a little more details. So, <clears throat> what is our cyber infrastructure? And sometimes people say, like, oh, you guys just do yet another private cloud. And it's much more than that. Sergey covered the most points what it is. But underneath, it contains everything you would typically expect from an enterprise and carrier grade uh, infrastructure services. It's a full blown virtualization, high performance hypervisor and gives you full life cycle of all your virtual machines. You can create them, you can clone them, migrate them, whatever you normally expect of that. Uh, Software-defined networking, that again covers the, all the virtual networking capabilities, including the built-in firewall for security and endpoint protection. Software-defined storage, it's our own, uh, <clears throat> our own product, our own technology that we developed in the company over the last several years that gives you a unique capability to do the high performance scale uh, of all these storage components that can be deployed in the individual boxes you can have in there. Uh, management and monitoring, you have a full aspect and full control of all the components that you would typically expect there for compute, storage, uh, networking, uh, global, uh, <coughs> global tools to monitor protection using, we use the Prometheus and Grafana there. Uh, high availability and naturally protect against the old individual components failures, as well as unique capability to do live kernel updates that do not require your the system reboot when you update your operating system kernel running. Uh, for your partners, the benefits I think they're obvious. I'm just going to repeat them again. It's a resilience against the data loss. Again, you can control what kind of level of resilience you, you're going to build, and you, you can control depending on your needs, your customers, your cost and capabilities doing that. Very attractive price point and a flexible licensing. 
Uh, we support commodity industry standard hardware. You can, uh, again, as Sergey said, you can pick up your own hardware supplier. You can leverage your existing hardware investment, uh, you know, like install the, uh, our cyber infrastructure and existing hardware if you need. Uh, have full control over that. Or we can help you with the hardware as well. Uh, scales to hundreds of petabytes. Uh, that's the real number of storage that we're currently running in our data centers across the world and give you scalable remote access to manage all the components of that. Uh, what I'm gonna show you is a, a, a quick demo, how do you install and run a backup and disaster recovery appliance. Appliance, you know, when you have your needs for disaster recovery, then having your things in the cloud is often not, not enough. Uh, appliance is like a first line of defense uh, of your office. This is literally a cyber, a chronic cyber infrastructure in the box. Something you put in your office, you plug it in, and you start that, and then you have a capability to have the first line of defense in your office. We have your backups, disaster recovery, ability to you know, recover your service on the appliance, as well as in the cloud. It's fully integrated, and I'll show you how easy it is to install and, and control that. So we'll cover the installation and the operation of that from the point of view of both the customer and the managed service provider. So <clears throat> from the point of view of the customer, installation is very simple. You get the box, put it in your office, you plug in two wires, power naturally, and the local network cable, you fire it up, and <clears throat> What it would do is, at the, at the boot process, does it, oh, okay, it start running. It gives you the code. Then you, as a service provider, you log in into your cyber infrastructure, and you have your clients here. I'm using the Voyager Inc. as the customer client, and you go there, and it basically says there's no appliances there. Here's when you register it, you just plug in the code you get during the boot process. You do the configuration, supply the local uh, credentials. We configure the network, as Nick said, we can detect all the network uh, automatically. You can override it with things you need to do. Here we go, you have the green up and running appliance. Dashboard, it's all uh, what you just seen in the Nick's presentation. Again, this, so now you connect it, the appliance at the customer site to your cyber cloud. Go and verify that, look at what the, how these things are, parameters there. Now you need to configure the backup plans and the disaster recovery plans. You log in into the local instance of the Acronis cyber infrastructure in your box. It looks essentially identical to what you've seen there. You look at the dashboard, what's going on there. Uh, this is actually the numbers that show that the plan's been running for a little bit. And it's automatically detected the servers, the devices on your local network. Now you can con configure the various backup and disaster recovery plans. And as you can, you can see here, you have a several destinations where you can uh, basically select, uh, it's actually easy for me to look at here, uh, where you're gonna keep your, your uh, where you're gonna keep your re recovery. You can do it both locally and in the cloud and you can set up a different uh, schedules. For example, like for every hour you can have a, a backup on your appliance and every 24 hours it goes in the, in the cloud. There's no need to configure VPN, it is all configured automatically by connecting the appliance to the cloud, so you have this full protection up and running. Now, uh, you want to create a recovery server, which is basically a, think about it as a virtual machine that is a total copy of your server in your network that will operate as a recovery, uh, <coughs> as a recovery target. Again, you can, you can select that, see what you need, and you can choose where you wanna do the recovery uh, there's a test recovery or a full production recovery. The only difference is 
uh, what network uh, <coughs> connections being used. For test recovery, it's a sample network that does not interfere with your production. For the full recovery, it's the real network. We set up all the networking configuration, and then you just go, can go ahead and start the server, log into that. This is your uh, disaster recovery copy. Uh, there's also a difference that for uh, the appliance contains the dis backup disaster appliance in that configuration contains two classes of, of storage. It's a hot storage for virtual machines, basically to stand up the production version of your recovery server, or it can be a cold storage, uh, usually hard drives, much cheaper where you keep your, your backups and you use that storage to directly stand up your recovery servers from that storage without consuming the more expensive SSDs. You have full control over that. So that's pretty much it. I mean, I was actually trying to keep up speaking with the how fast this thing goes. It's very close to real time. Uh, the appliances are available right there on the show floor. Please stop by, look at that, see the live demo, try that. They're out there. Uh, <clears throat> a couple of sessions that you, actually three sessions you might find interesting, two of them later this afternoon at the same time. And then tomorrow, I'm actually doing the last session tomorrow, uh, we'll go into more details on the cyber infrastructure and have a more cap you know, opportunity to do the Q&A and go into the more depth on that. That's it, Alex. That's it. OK, thank you. <clears throat> One thing I want to point out, if you think about the magic of cyber protection and magic of being easy, efficient, and secure, it cannot be possible without cyber infrastructure. Because actually, whatever you do with your infrastructure, you need to be able to run a copy. And, and so for that, you need some other infrastructure. And that infrastructure has to be special. And we are really the only company which have our own design technology for protection from the scratch fully integrated with the rest of our applications for protection and that cyber infrastructure, which makes us sustainably uh, easy, sustainably efficient, and sustainably secure for a foreseeable future. Um, and that means you can do business better. But there is another thing which is very important to what we are talking on the summit. Cyber protection, cyber infrastructure, finally it is cyber platform. We believe that there is so many different workloads, application data and systems. There is so many different protection types, how you want to protect your data, archiving, compliance, um, different forms of backup, different forms of replication, different forms of synchronization. There is so many software packages to integrate with, and there is so many destinations for protection. And again, for us, it's important that we want you to use cyber infrastructure, but in fact, with Acronis, you don't have to. You can use your own infrastructure, or you can use Amazon, or you can use Microsoft. You know, if you have good amounts of money, it's always good to spend it on something as good as Amazon. And, and so please go ahead, otherwise you can use ours, but it works. It's very important that it will always work because we believe in giving customers and partners a choice. And so this is uh, something which we have pre-announced in April, and this is a focus of the summit. This is, in fact, the reason why we have the summit, Acronis Cyber Platform, which is an open API and SDK, which will make more and more complete. There is an application level, cloud automation level, business automation layer, uh, Acronis any data layer, and universal infrastructure layer. On any of those layers, you can add missing capabilities, which is important. I'll talk about why it's important in, in the first session tomorrow, in the keynote tomorrow, I start the keynote, I'll talk about it. But in the meantime, I want to invite our chief operating officer and president who is running all of the uh, technology uh, since in the company, Stanislav Pratasov. He will talk about Acronis cyber platform, how you can customize your cyber protection, how you can integrate it with a variety of different packages you use to run your business, such as professional service automation, provisioning, billing, and so on and so forth, and how you can extend it to cover broader protection. Stanislav, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Sergey. Um, so what is Acronis uh, Cyber Platform? It's uh, several pieces tied together 
definitely the core of the pro platform is uh, SDKs, software development kits. Sergey listed them over there, and uh, I will be talking in more details tomorrow. But actually, this is uh, how uh, independent software vendors, uh, our partners, and uh, even customers can customize and extend our platform. Uh, we are going to provide it in multiple programming languages, and uh, important part for using those SDKs and building the extension to the platform and running those extensions is definitely uh, people who support and guide you through. So we have a team which helps uh, uh, partners to start working with us from business perspective. We have team, we are building that team of uh, ev technical evangelists explaining how our platform works and uh, what opportunities you have. And uh, we have uh, people answering your questions on support forums and so on and so forth. We have documentation which is a part of our platform and that uh, documentation provides you with API reference which is probably the most important part of any documentation but it also contains samples and it uh, also contains uh, integration guides. Um, we are building an ecosystem. We are working with uh, uh, both independent uh, software vendors, uh, integrators, and our partners to build uh, the new and unique services. Actually, one of the major reasons why we are doing the, why we are opening the platform is regardless how smart we are and how many developers we have, we never will cover all the business needs and all the creative ideas of our customers. And we have developers, uh, developer portal, which is open right now. And uh, Acronis is a creative company, so we call it uh, developer.acronis.com. And this portal contains all the information you need to start working with us and start building your integrations. So it has the documentation. It has the links to all the samples on uh, GitHub. And uh, we license those samples under MIT li uh, license. So you can actually fork it, modify it, and use it freely. Uh, while building your integration. Uh, we have all the libraries. Actually, uh, by the end of this year, we will support uh, six most uh, popular programming languages uh, uh, which are used in our industry for integration. It's Python, PHP, uh, Java, C Sharp, and... Uh, uh, give me a second. Okay, never mind, it should be there. And uh, we definitely provide access to Sandbox because if you build an integration, you want to see it uh, live and running, you want to actually uh, check it before moving in, into the production, it's also over there. And uh, all the links to our forums, community, uh, certified, uh, uh, integrators and certified solutions are also on this portal. Let me show you a very short demo just to give you an idea how uh, good integration should look like. I mean, it should be simple and it should be fully integrated because if it's, uh, it looks aligned, then it's actually not easy to use. So let's imagine uh, we are small partner of Acronis. We don't have many customers, so we just sign in a new one. Uh, it's a low company, and apparently since I don't have many customers, I don't expect many other lawyers coming, so it would have the name law firm. We check the services. As you can see, all those 
familiar services is from Acronis, but the last one is actually the integration we are building like right now is data loss prevention service. And it's integrated into our uh, management console. So we select the quarter. We let uh, this law firm to protect up to 10 devices and make it a soft quota so we can uh, charge lawyers for over usage, which is very important. <laughs> yeah, because charging lawyers is actually... Okay, and now let's uh, switch to this uh, newly created uh, customer management uh, console and create a protection plan. There are no devices, we just created this customer. So let's create a protection plan. As you can see, data loss prevention service is here. And we are lawyers, so we are creative. That, would, that plan we will call default protection plan. Okay, here it is. And um, in this service, we do not have a lot to customize for the customers, but let us uh, uh, protect uh, from data loss uh, from all possible sources. So with that, we create the protection plan. You can see it. Now I can apply it to all my machines and have both backup and uh, protection. And the last part of this demo is actually our user interface uh, design kit. We use it for all our products ourselves. All the controls are here. And we give it actually to you. And to understand how easy uh, to add the support in the user interface, that's actually the real code for the uh, data protection plan uh, for, for the customer I showed. That's pretty much it. We want uh, you to be able to add extremely easy new services and uh, do uh, unique offering for your customers. And please come to the sessions. We are going to talk about uh, Cyber Platform today and tomorrow. Start talking to our team. Thank you. Thank you, Sergey. Yeah, I, I, I just want to point out, between the three products, Cyber Platform is the newest, and it's very, very important for partners because it's ultimately about one thing. You're making more profit, having less churn, and having more growth with your customers, and you being differentiated from others. Uh, there is many other reasons why you want to develop something on top of Acronis platform. Um, you know, you could be an ISV, and you could just develop and sell your application. The important thing which we don't want to break for any customer is a single solution. So you can build a completely separate product, DLP, which we do not do today, but when you integrate it with Acronis Cyber Platform, is one solution. It didn't make things any more complicated, hopefully not any more expensive, and also um, it, it kept the security in place. Now, finally, there is another thing which is already sold today, and that's Acronis Cyber Cloud. That's something which we started doing six years ago. We started shipping five years ago and four years ago more actively. And that is something where we take cyber protection and we wrap it around uh, with things required for service providers to be successful. First of all, all of our infrastructure is not only hybrid, but it's also multi-tenant, highly multi-tenant, and highly multi-tier. You can have any number of tiers, distributor, reseller, another reseller of a reseller, consultant of a reseller who sells to a customer. We support it. We provide complete provisioning and billing without which you cannot really run a service provider business in scale. We do variety of audit and quotas, which is required for you to build the products and service plans for your customers, differentiated from your competitors. We enable white labeling and complete integration. What's unique, we provide some integration with PSA ourselves. Some of it is built by our professional service automation partners like ConnectWise, who is here on the conference, but some of it you can build if you want and you can extend it. And it's upsell ready, it's multiple products in one, 
So as a service provider, one of the best ways to decrease churn is by having multiple products sold to a single customer. It's much harder to go away from multiple products, and so they will stay with you. With that, I want to invite our cyber cloud expert, um, James, on stage. He will talk about cyber cloud, and the whole goal for cyber cloud is to enable service providers to start selling fast, to reduce churn and earn more money, and to differentiate your service. You can get new customers. Go ahead, James. Thank you, Sergey. Well, howdy, y'all. Good morning. I'd like to go ahead and uh, introduce you guys to the new additions that we have available that we're rolling out to you all, right? The new additions that we're rolling out will include our cyber advance and our cyber disaster recovery. Now, let me go ahead and explain why we're rolling these out to you today. The reason why we're rolling these out to you today is so that you can meet and exceed your customer's cyber needs. The fact is, is that today you're selling backup and soon you'll be able to sell all of our cyber protection services. They're all built on one platform, simple to sell, very easy licensing. So as I said, today you're selling backup, tomorrow you're going to be able to sell the entire cyber protection suite. All tenants start out standard and you're able to then upgrade to the advanced edition. The advanced edition is really built for our enterprise customers, those who are supporting Exchange, SQL, Oracle. Our disaster recovery is really built for those who have the need for high availability, you know, high RTO requirements. So we're giving you the ability to fail over to the cloud, we're giving you the, the ability to back up and fail over locally as well. The nice thing with Acronis is that we're not tying you to one thing. We're allowing you to meet your customers' needs, right? So with Cyber Advanced, you're able to meet your enterprise needs. With Cyber Disaster Recovery, you're able to meet your high RTO needs. With Cyber Files, you're able to provide secure enterprise-grade file access sync and share tools. With Cyber Notary, you're able to provide the ability to certify and verify that your documents are authentic. All of that's based off of one platform, like I said. Multi-tier, multi-tenant, built with the MSP in mind. Now we've scaled this out to the enterprise as well. We don't want to limit you guys to one situation. We want to allow you to back up anything, and we want to allow you to back it up anywhere, okay? With that being said, there's multiple deployment options, right? Sergey said, we have the ability for us, Acronis, to host this. We have a hybrid model. We also have a service provider model where you can back up to your own data center, whether that be Amazon, Azure, or just your basement. Now, the nice thing here is that we do have integrations available today with the top RMMs and PSAs, such as ConnectWise, right? And those integrations are phenomenal. If you guys are looking to make some money today, look at those integrations. From there, you can also create your brand awareness with our white labeling services, right? You can use our custom branding, you can use your own logos, and you can brand out all of our services with your business. Now, with all that being said, I'm gonna give you a very, very, very quick demonstration. It's gonna be about three minutes and 30 seconds. If you guys wanna see more, come and see us at the booth, okay? So, what we're going to do is start off with creating a partner. When you create a partner, you have the option to select any one of the additions. As I said, we'll start with standard. From there, you can select advanced, you can select the disaster recovery edition, and the idea is, is that you can select multiple editions for your partners, and you have the ability to select one of those editions for your customer. Now, what I wanna show you guys today is 2FA. This is something we've been waiting to release for a while. Now, what you'll see here is our user accounts. You can see the progress of your user accounts, and you'll see my user account does not have 2FA enabled. So what I'm going to do here is disable 2FA and then enable it. We'll log out here and log back in. At this point, you will need a TOTP authenticator app, something like Google, Microsoft. And what you'll do is download that from the Play Store, App Store. You'll open it up and scan our QR code. Once you scan the QR code, it will provide you with an authenticated code, which will log you into our management console. Once you're in that management console, you can drill into your customers or into your partners. You can see the usage. The nice thing here is that you can then manage those services for your customers or for your partners. So what we'll do is we'll jump from the management console right on over to our backup console. What I'd like to show you guys here is that now we have the ability to do multiple hops with our backup job. We can replicate to more than one location. Before it used to be backup local to, and then go out to the cloud, and now we can back up to five locations. So create a job, 
We could do the entire machine, files, folders, disks, really whatever you'd like to. And then we can back it up locally, we can back it up to uh, you know, NAS, we can back it up to the cloud. Uh, like I said, we can go multiple hops, and as the final resting place would be the cloud, you also have the ability to set independent retention policies. So if you wanna have something like seven months in the cloud, one week local, you have the option to set those independently. Let me also talk about Office 365, all right? So in addition to back up all of the things that we can back up, we have Office 365 as well. Office 365 and G Suite are our cloud-to-cloud -cloud agents, really not much configuration necessary. You click it, you provide your credentials, the global administrator credentials, and we'll provide you a list of your users. At which point you have the ability to use our group backup plan. And group backup plan makes it so you don't have to go and modify these backup plans as your companies or customers <clears throat> have new or old users. Meaning we hire somebody new, we don't have to add them. We fire somebody, we don't have to add them. We don't have to delete them. It is done automatically. And then we have the ability to go in and do individual resource as well, whether that be restoring an email, restoring an attachment, sending the email, or recovering it to maybe a group. So with all of the backups that we offer you today, we also offer you the ability to restore them multiple ways. In addition to that, we also have our disaster recovery functionality for you to restore with, right? So with that being said, if your site were to go out, you don't have access to your Exchange server, how are you going to continue functioning as a business? Let's fail over to the DR Cloud. All you have to do is click our simple failover button, click our console button, and log right on in. At which point, you'll have the access to the original system as it were at that point in time. I'm not sure why that's happening like this, guys, but it looks much better in real life. Again, come and see us at the booth, and you'll be able to see a much better demonstration. Again, this is a very, very quick three minute, 30 second demonstration, but please in, come and take a look at the booth, and we'll be able to show you the rest of the cyber security, cyber protection services. Thank you. How many of people here are already using cyber cloud today and offering services on top? Well, one thing which we are committed with every release of cyber cloud, we're adding cyber protection features, but we're also adding things to make it easier for service providers to do business. Ultimately, our main target is to get all of you guys profitable, growing and having less churn with our products. And sky's the limit on how much we can do. And one of the things which we are doing on the quest of our partners since about few quarters, we launch Acronis Cyber Services, and I want the partners to pay attention to this offering. We have services in these five areas, specifically cybersecurity, several services in cybersecurity, such as security assessment, uh, security awareness trainings, incident response, and forensic. We will have more services for ISV, building things together with ISVs, integrated, transparently into our rapidly growing platform with rapidly growing number of partners and workloads, which is a great channel for you. Artificial intelligence and machine learning services, many of the people we work with, especially in the sport industry, but other industries, considering the efficiency of our product, now can keep a lot of data, we can help to make sense of the data, so they will keep even more data, so if you charge per gigabyte or per workload, you will be able to make more money Blockchain-based services, another area which we are looking at for five years, and we have a lot of expertise uh, in this. We actually just recently spin off a company which provides a blockchain application management platform and provision automation platform, Chainstack, and just general purpose professional services. Not only we're offering it from Acronis, and this is something which we can jointly sell to your customers, but we intend to teach our partners on how to do these services. Ultimately, our partners are the best service delivery mechanism. We want to focus on technology and software. This is something we are doing today based on demand of customers and partners, but eventually we want to make it possible for you to offer the services. Why we're doing all of that? Very, very simple, to provide complete cyber protection, safety, accessibility, privacy, authenticity, and security, SAPAS, in such ways that it's low cost of ownership for the customer, it's very, very easy to use, it's very reliable, there is full control, and it's always secure, 
And of course, not forgetting this, it's also providing great margin and great profit opportunities for partners. One other thing I wanted to talk about this today, and this is much more about service providers and much more about ISVs, this event, than it is about our classical partners. Nevertheless, we are self-serving all of our classical partners and all of our classical customers with the same technology. And we are officially renaming on this event Acronis Backup to Acronis Cyber Backup. We believe backup is dead, and I can make a stronger statement than some other parts of a uh, cyber security and cyber protection ecosystem, but let's focus on backup. So backups are not protected. Backup primarily data is not, pr primary data is not protected. The agents are not protected. There is downtime after the attack, and there is no data authenticity guarantee. So the backup as you use it, you think we have competitors, not gonna name them here, not a good practice, but they don't actually have a proper solution. Their solution works inside the large data center. It is private enough inside the large data center. It, it is uh, likely authentic enough. It is secure on the perimeter and on the network, and so on and so forth. But once you move out to the edge and move out to the endpoint, it's no longer the case. So we provide cyber backup, which is designed, protected from all these five vectors from the start. And this is a great opportunity for partners. We continue to be very much dedicated to our partners. Um, and this is a main type of partners, distributors, cloud and classical distributors. We believe you can sign many more service providers. Today, we have 6,000. Four years ago, we had zero. We think in three years, we should have 25 to 50,000 partners. If you work with us as distributors, you can have them as your partner. Service providers, just an opportunity to do more business, uh, to provide broader set of products. Resellers and ISV to convert to service providers or to sell our classical product. ISVs to build solutions on top of our Acronis Cyber platform and leverage our channel distributors and partners to our customers, which is almost everybody selling your solution and OEMs leveraging our technology. And one thing which we also want to bring to your partners is not just to be doing well, but to be doing good, and that's Acronis Cyber Foundation. We truly believe in Acronis and all evils are caused by insufficient knowledge. One major knowledge which we have to bring to this industry is the knowledge of the fact that every workload, every customer, everywhere in the world must be protected. But besides that, we do these good things. We build schools. We built eight schools to date. We're building a nine school in uh, Acronis. We do it together with partners. It's a great engagement tool for your employees and your partners. We educate inmates in prison, as I mentioned yesterday. I don't know if there is any people who want to be in Singapore prison. We can get this organized. Uh, it's a very nice prison. It's very, very safe in the prison. If you really feel paranoid that you're being attacked, if you are put in the cell, there is many levels of security there. We also educate with our US subsidiary, Acronis SCS veterans, and we are starting the program for migrants in Switzerland. Everywhere we are, we're trying to engage with the local community and with local industry partners, and we do much more. So one thing which I wanted to say here, I want to invite you to the way to help Acronis Cyber Foundation. There's two ways to help. So one way is you can participate in Acronis Cyber Foundation charity reception. Many of you have had an opportunity to buy tickets. We have really valuable gifts on there. This is a wonderful cyber feed bike. There are three bikes um, outside, which is very important for your employees. You can install it in your office and every single employee of yours will work harder and will actually work longer and be healthier, will never get sick. Super expensive watch and other things. The other way to, to, to support us is of course to just do more business. If you do more business with us, believe us, we'll take some of the money and we spend it to do good things like helping migrants, veterans, helping inmates to find other jobs and building schools. And I specifically wanted to stop on the most expensive present. This is a present from our headquarter city, from a very famous company, um, um, Moser, which was founded in 1828. It's a luxury Swiss watch brand, and we're giving two watches away, one watch to people who participate in Acronis Cyber Foundation 
raffle today. How many of you bought lottery tickets? Anybody? Anybody? Okay, there are some people. Buy tickets. It's, it's a very nice watch, and there are many other items available, and the other way is to just attend enough booths at the trade floor, and then to attend our uh, uh, closing reception where we're going to run the, the second raffle for those who just been a good uh, Acronis partners and stay till the end. Was that a short movie about Moser and about this wonderful watch? Really amazing, one of the yeah, best watch brands in the world. Uh, of dreamers. It's about creating products that we appreciate, that we're proud to wear. It's, it's about love, it's about passion. When I meet the owners of, of Moser watches, what I realize is not only they want something very unique, um, that not everybody else has, but also they want true value. Product where there's innovation, ingenuity, amazing mechanics, and they appreciate that. So Henry Moser was an entrepreneur. We think that the Melon family, are, we are also entrepreneurs, and that's what we like. My great-grandfather had two talents. He knew how to produce watches, and he knew how to manage a company. Heinrich Moser went to St. Petersburg at the age of 21. Tsar Nicholas I needed a mechanical piece to be repaired, and Heinrich Moser was the first one and the only one who could do it. What's interesting about entrepreneurialism is, I think it's what links us to Heinrich Moser, the founder of the company, it links us to our family, I believe we are entrepreneurs, it links us also to our customers, very self-confident people. They're buying it for themselves. It's not to show off, it's not to to make a, a, a statement, it's, it's something they buy for, for themselves. People in this part of the watch industry are not buying uh, an instrument to read time. They buy uh, the history, they buy the design, they buy uh, all the ideas behind the mechanical parts. Uh, if you want to buy something just to read time, you are not our customer. Right. So I, I just want to say that the watch is most complex engineering product built to date. And um, uh, in the old world, and, and of course, we are trying to make our product looks as beautiful as a luxury watch. And they are perhaps very complex inside, but you don't see that complexity. And so if you actually participate, you can win. But there's only two watches, and we are not actually um, you know, trying to exclude any partners. So if you've just been a good citizen and just go to the trade floor and talk to the partners on the trade floor, you will be able to get this wonderful Swiss uh, card. Very, very useful device. You see there are screwdrivers, very important for service providers to help your customers, right? And every one of you can get one. Just, just collect enough stamps. We're really nice to our partners. And so we will give you this if only possible. So cyber protection revolution starts today. Uh, traditional data protection solutions and not only are really that, you have to have an integrated solution for the endpoint and edge. And so that is the main messages of this event. Acronis Cyber Cloud, which you can sell today, is growing for us close to 150%. It's becoming the largest portion of Acronis business. Every product of Acronis is part of the Cyber Cloud. The three new things, Acronis Cyber Infrastructure, which is our well-designed from the scratch for protection, unique product, which is very, very easy to use and very cost-efficient and very secure. Acronis Cyber Platform, where you as ISV, as service provider, can uh, build new features and make your customers more sticky and satisfy them better. Acronis Cyber Protect, which is an amazing and the only proper way to protect your edge and endpoint workloads. And of course, I want to invite all of you to the next Cyber Summit. We're still choosing the location. There is a picture of Miami here, because I really like Miami. It should be around end of the year, and it should be around um, maybe November, but we're still choosing the location. Perhaps it's gonna be Miami. Already today, we're not fitting initially with targeted 300 people, and there is many more, uh, close to 700, which are present at that floor today, uh, with over 1,000 registered. Thank you, and with that, I want to invite um, our uh, marketing officer and strategy officer, Gaidar, who will talk more about what we do. And, and by you. the way, I keep forgetting that as a company with dual protection, just in case we have these two other stages, right? So I only use that stage, but at that point, I realize that I have to go and sit over there as well. So yeah, everything so is protected. We have backup for everything. Thank you, Sergey.
And I won't take a lot of your time, but marketing is also important, right? And the thing I want to talk to you about is CyberFit. And you see this CyberFit hashtag everywhere. And the reason we have it is the marketing campaign to get the cyber protection to the customers. So all of us here, we understand the importance of cyber protection. We understand why we need it to protect our customers, to protect our infrastructure, to make money selling cyber protection. But how do we get to the customer in this very noisy world? Like you do a search on the web and then embarrassing ads are following you everywhere. So it's like everywhere, the ads on you, there are people trying to sell you something. So it's very difficult to get people to listen to you. So what we offer is the CyberFit campaign. So first of all, we work with the sports partners. Many of you have seen it. Many of you attended our events that we do with sports partners. And we work with teams in Formula One, Formula E, football, or how we call it here in US, soccer. Uh, we, we work with baseball. We have many more partnerships. And that's an opportunity for us to have a very specific case studies, use cases with those teams, because they all depend on data. They all need cyber protection. They have very specific use cases that we can advertise, and we can talk to our customers about them. And there's also emotional connection. Through the sports, we can engage more people and we can get time on their schedule to listen to us and to understand our cyber fit campaign better and understand why we do cyber fit. When you talk to a customer, you tell them to be fit in the real life. You do fitness so you can live longer, you can be healthier. So to be okay in the digital world, you have to be cyber fit. So that's the campaign. That's what we explain to people. And all of those sports benefits are available to our partners. So you can work with us. You can reach out to the marketing team, and we can do joint events. We can do joint activities. We have all the content available to you as well, so you can promote Acronis and cyber protection and cyber fit. And what's in it for you? So that's the way to differentiate. In this noisy world, noisy environment, you can talk to customers. You can tell them, be cyber fit. That's the way to educate them, to talk to them, and at the end of the day, to generate the pipeline, generate leads, help you to renew the customers that you already have to cyber protection, and also upsell the new services to customers. Because you do good to the customer. They all need those services. They all need the cyber protection, and you offer them what they need. That's a perfect fit, right? So at the end of the day, those five vectors of SAPAS, they actually target you to the end customer. The customer, you, customer, you have a copy. You can access your copy. It's a private copy. You have control who has access to it. You are absolutely sure that you have the original copy. And of course, it's secure copy. So that's something that everybody needs. And you have this campaign to get customers to understand it. And just to illustrate that it's very important, not only for us, but to our customers, our partners, our friends to talk about it. It's not only Acronis talking about cyber protection, the importance of being cyber fit. Uh, I want to invite a very special guest, an off counsel of a law firm, Greenspoon and Martyr, and also the mayor of the city of Miami, Mayor Suarez. Please welcome. Good morning, and uh, welcome you all to the 2019 Cyber Summit. Uh, cyber protection uh, is something that is incredibly, incredibly important uh, to cities. Many cities have uh, small IT departments, but they're managing very large volumes of sensitive data, data that protects our residents, their security, and the viability and the effectiveness of how our systems function. Since 2013, we've had at least 169 ransomware attacks reported in the United States. Uh, and that involves both cities, counties, and states as targets. Just recently, in, two, in June of 2019, June 27th, Lake City had a major breach where they had to pay a 42 bitcoins as a ransom. Riviera Beach is one of the most famous ones, the Riviera Beach hostage situation. Uh, Key Biscayne is another one that has had to deal with major uh, attempts to infiltrate their system. And we've had police departments in Illinois, Maine, Massachusetts, and Tennessee that have all had major tech breaches. In addition to that, Baltimore had to spend $18 million on a recovery 
for a ransom of 800,000. And of course, everyone knows uh, my good friend in Atlanta, Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms, who had a major issue as well. They're not only something that is on our radar screen, the intrusions like phishing, zero day exploits, and other types of malware and more are growing concerns to all kinds of leaders, not only from local governments, but from governments across the nation. And of course, in the international community. When a public sector organization lacks proper cyber security protections, like a resilient backup, recovery software, segmented networks, encryption, and multi-factor authentication, it becomes unnecessarily vulnerable to attack. Governments face unique and serious consequences, including costly downtime, loss of sensitive data, and interruption to critical citizens' services. They stand to lose the one commodity that they can't lose, which is the trust and confidence of the people that they serve. And I can tell you that as mayor of the city of Miami, everything that we do is becoming much more tech focused, much more tech oriented. Uh, I can tell you that one of my major initiatives this year was electronic plans. Every single plan that is submitted in the city of Miami for every single permit, every single building is on an electronic platform. That's not the way it used to be. That my next initiative is, is called eStart. We want to be able to start a business in the city of Miami, which is number one in the nation in entrepreneurship, number one in the nation in job creation, and number one in the nation in small businesses. But we want to make it easier and better. And we want to do that through a platform that we call eStart. eStart will allow every business owner in the city of Miami to start their business from their cell phone. But of course, if we can't protect that data, if we can't ensure that our residents can rely on it when they decide they want to push that button and start that business, then what good is that platform? And so for me, it's a huge honor uh, to present Sergey with this uh, salute and to declare today Miami Cyber Fit Day in the city of Miami. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for what you're doing for us. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Nice yes. All right. Let's hold it. Here we go. Let me get you set. You keep the All right. Let's go. Let's get the Let's get the yeah. Branding's important. Now we talk. Here we go. You got it, Lola? Thank you, Sergey. Thank you. So, I think with that, we're going to conclude our talk. I think we heard from the mayor one thing which is critically important. And suddenly, all of us being in IT business have this mission to provide protection for every workload and every customer. And, and so having a cyber feed day is something which is happening in Miami, but it should happen in every city, everywhere in the world. It's really important to be cyber protected.